First off, word knowledge. If you've never seen this before, go ahead and take a screenshot. But there are just a couple of things that you really want to pay attention to. So first off, obviously, I said it before, but I'll say it again because more people join. Common everyday words. I'm telling you right now, the ASVAB is not, and I'm not even going to say rocket science because that's a little condescending. I want to make sure that you understand that the ASVAB is not as difficult as you might make it out to be, um, especially when it comes to the word knowledge. And what I mean by that is they're not going to you know, try to ask you some crazy seven syllable word that sounds just like you'll never even use it. They're going to use a lot of words that have use in culture and in the context that you'll be in in the military. Like there are going to be some common everyday words in there that if you continue expanding your vocabulary, you're probably going to find that word or a synonym of that word on the test. Now, that word, synonym, somebody help me out. What does synonym mean? Similarity words, words that mean the same thing as the other word. Booyah, Ronald. Nail right on the head. Yes. We have to make sure that we understand the synonyms of words because there's, I can guarantee you right now, at least eight different ways to say the same word. So one word is happy. We can think of elated. We can think of excited. We can think of euphoric. We can think of all of these different words that mean the literal same thing. You know, joyed, overjoyed, things like that. So remember that it's not just about memorizing one word at a time. It's about understanding the word and really, truly, honestly, making it part of your vocabulary. If you can do that, you're putting yourself in a better position. There's no guarantees, but you can continue putting yourself in a better position. So with that said, another thing you want to pay attention to here, you know, obviously your prefixes, suffixes, and words are going to be important, but those common words really do overtake it way more. Now, on top of that, another thing you want to highlight, download this app, Vocabulary Builder app by Magoosh. Go ahead, shout yourself out in the chat box or shout yourself out with the mic. Are you using? Vocabulary Builder at by Magush and you're the truth. <laughs> and how do you feel you're... about it? Yes, yeah, it's just a really good app. Good. What are some things that make it good? It actually uh -huh. makes me look forward to like learning new words. And it's like a repeated thing. Like they won't let you go past unless you understand the words. I was hey. just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You get one wrong and they're like, hey, we'll come back to this. We'll come yeah. back to this. Then, okay, you start doing some more words. All right, cool. Oh, I got this one, got this one. Then that same word comes back that you got wrong. Oh, yep. what was it this time? And then they switch the order of the answers up so it's not like, oh, yeah, it's the third one when I see it again. No, 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 no. Exactly. They randomize it. They try to screw you up in all different ways. And it's a really great way to, to just become interested in, in increasing your vocabulary. Because not only, not only can you uh, get it in multiple choice, not only does it give you the definition of the word, not only does it put it in a sentence for you, but it literally sounds the word out for you, too. There's a little button right there. Click it. Boom. Says the word so you know how to pronounce it. I mean, I think we can all agree that there have been times where we read words online that we needed to know, but we have no clue how to pronounce it. We've all been there. But by being able to pronounce it, true or false, everybody, by being able to pronounce a word, it's a lot easier to remember said word. True. And understand. Yeah, Absolutely. It is a much higher likelihood that you'll remember that word. And so, yeah, go ahead and use the Vocabulary Builder app. I mean, I'm going to continue working on the, the Word Knowledge Bootcamp to try to make it even come close to that. But I'm not going to front. That's a really good app. It's free. And also, if you're in the All Access Pass, boom, grab that Word Knowledge Bootcamp to supplement that because you also get the words and definitions and sentences as well. So there it is, my party people. 15 minutes a day minimum on Word Knowledge is going to take you very, very far. I know a lot of us here have more than that. We can probably do 20, 30 minutes, up to you. But a minimum of 15 minutes a day, if you are doing it for a minimum of a month and a half or two, you're going to be in a really good spot. Absolutely. So with that said, about how much time per question do we get on the word knowledge, not the paragraph comprehension? Word 30 seconds. Knowledge. About 30 seconds. Yeah, about 30 seconds. And that's exactly what we're going to be using today about 30 seconds per question. So I know that it does take a brief moment for me to go ahead and turn the page over and start the timer. So I'm gonna give you just about 35 seconds. I'm gonna let you know when the time is up and then I'm gonna say five, four, three, two, one, give your answer, all right? And here's the thing, everybody. 
I've got to be honest about this. We are not here to feed our egos. What does that mean? Don't wait for everybody else to put their answer in so you can put yours in. We ain't playing that game today. Like, just try your best. And even if you have to take a guess, take a good guess. Like, trust your instinct. Because I can bet you, sometimes your instinct is going to carry you to a correct answer. And when you do that the right way, you're going to start picking up on the reasons why your brain is telling you to pick that answer. And so if you're the person that's just sitting back and waiting and just, oh, everybody's picking C, dude, you have no idea why C is actually the answer. Or you never actually felt the pride go in there and actually take the risk. You need to put yourself out there, right? So try every problem out. Let's get it going. So 30 seconds per question, but I will give you an extra five to get ready to put your answer in. So let's go ahead and get a game. Three, two, one. Let's go. Four, three, two, one, pick an answer, pick an answer, pick an answer, commit to it, commit to it, commit to it, commit to it. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Give you your best shot here. Don't wait for everybody else to put their answers in. That's the one thing that will shoot yourself in the foot. All right. So here we go. So the theme of today, if you haven't noticed already, is that we're doing sentence questions. So we're going to be using a vocabulary word that's going to be emphasized. So here it's bolded. So that word is going to be bolded, also repeated right there. And this is a common type of question on the word knowledge. The majority of the words are just going to be the word most nearly means what? That's the most common type. This is the second most common type where they're going to provide you with a sentence. And there's a few different ways that you can tackle these questions as well. Because think about it like this. When we were thinking about just the words by themselves, like blank, most nearly means whatever. Really nine times out of 10, if you know the word, you know it. And then maybe you can play off of prefixes, root words, things like that. But the majority of the time, it's either you know it or you don't. Now, everybody, what's the advantage that we have when we're dealing with the word in a sentence? What advantages do we have? Replacing the other, con the other words in a sentence. I love that. That's context. one strategy we can use. And yes, what I, yes, the specific phrase I was looking for was context clues. But Felicia gave an outstanding answer, honestly. But yeah. Context clues is the main thing I was trying to say, but great job, Felicia, there. You can replace the words that we have as well in the sentence to get the general feel for it. And those are really the two main strategies. So let's write them out. Hey, remember, before you move on, the ASVAB is not just about memorizing questions. It's about truly understanding what you're doing. So that's why I offer a free practice test that has video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. On top of that, I offer a free class once a week via Zoom. So go ahead, check out the link here in the description. That way you can sign up raise your score for free, and get those materials you really need to start building the confidence that you deserve. Let's go ahead, let's ace the ASVAB and get you that job that you want. Let's get to it, sign up now, let's go. With sentence questions, two main strategies, let's write these out. So sentence strategies. All right, so strategy number one, we can go ahead and use context clues. So really to simplify it, because obviously context and clues doesn't really sound like it means a lot, unless you know what that actually means. So what it actually means is read around the word. So yes or no, just to prove a point in the chat box or on the microphone, if you're using the mic, give me a yurt. But if you have ever tried to use context clues or read around the word and found some sort of consistent success, give me a yurt. Yurt. And look at that chat box there too. Boom. So I think we're proving a point here. Reading around the word, is it a foolproof method? Is it ever going to fail you? Sometimes, maybe, you know, small percentage of the times. But remember, Word knowledge is a game of probability. It's about giving you a better shot than doing nothing at all. That's what strategy is about. Nothing is ever guaranteed, but it's about giving yourself a better shot. So that will work. 
Now, we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about uh, reading around the word in a moment, but the second strategy, replacement. So all that really means, answer choices, replace it with the word. So we can say, you know, A, B, C, D. And the sentence, so basically all that means is plug in the answer choices for the word in the sentence. See what may or may not work or what feels the same. So let's go ahead and try this out here. Strategy number one, let's go ahead and use context clues. All right. She did a great deal to blank him after his wife left him, but there was only so much that could be done. So she did a great deal to blank him after his wife left him, but there was only so much that could be done. So what does it sound like this person is trying to do? It kind of sounds like to me, well, oh, okay, this person's wife left them. Uh, it might, almost sounds like this person is trying to make them feel better. Right. And Chrissy just said it word for word. That's awesome. Yeah. Try to comfort them. Right. Exactly. Trying to express empathy, trying to let them know that you're there for them. Right. Support them. I think we can all agree that that's a general feel if we were to go ahead and kind of just remove the word there. All right. So console, what could console mean? Okay, so we already said it. All right, comfort them, make them feel better. Which of these words kind of sounds like that? Solace, maybe some of us don't know what solace means. Okay, maybe we'll leave it right there for a moment. Command, I don't know. It kind of sounds like you're taking advantage of them you're trying to command them after their wife left them. So let's just go ahead and say that that's a no-no. And th this is legit how you can go about it on the word knowledge. Like, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure she shouldn't be commanding anybody after that. Okay, no. Pester. Everybody, what does pester mean? Annoy. Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to mind, right? Annoy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like these kids you are really the teacher, right? Yeah. So no, I don't think that would fit either because it, again, sounds like we should be using a comforting word. That's not it. Next, perpetuate. Okay, what does perpetuate mean? Who knows what perpetuate means? Arshina is going to give the answer in seven seconds. Three, two, and one. Close eye. Arshina, what's your take? Has anyone ever heard of perpetual? Maybe. Yeah. Like yes, I think so. Yeah. So, based off of that, do you have maybe a guess of what perpetuate means? You could type it in. Ooh, take a guess, take a guess. Oh, yeah, like perpetual liar. So perpetuate would mean to make something unchanging. So if someone is a perpetual liar, they're not going to change. So perpetuate would mean to make something consistent. Exactly. Like habitual. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. And so would that fit here? She did a great deal to unchange him after his wife left. What? It, yeah, it doesn't really exactly fit. So even if you didn't know what solace meant, then you would still be able to use a process of elimination to get answer choice A. So notice how reading around the word and using replacement after the fact to see, okay, which one of these would likely be what we're trying to kind of get at? Boom. There we go. Now, solace, solace, and console are very similar words in a sense. So A is the answer. Now, the definition of console is to condole with, give condolences to, sympathize with. And so, yeah, condolences, console. I mean, although it doesn't look like it, but I think they're of the same root. And so as a sentence right here at the bottom, let's go ahead and read that and move forward here. So a good, let me actually mark it here. A good manager is able to console their workers with appropriate boundaries. Cool. So with that said, let's keep the party going. Number two, let me get that timer going. Three, two, one, let's go.
and five, four, three, two, one. Don't wait. Come on. Go ahead. Put those answers in. Put those answers in. Yeah, don't wait to see that B appear five times or the C appear to seven times. No, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Nah, Shakoya. Hey, hey, hey uh, I saw you put two answers there. Pick one. One. Uno. Une. All right. All right, cool. Sounds good. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's apply those two strategies. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those strategies for ourselves. That way we got a nice little frame of reference to work with. All right, here we go. So maybe you can stop complaining and theorize ways to win next year. All right, let's go ahead and read that again. Let's remove the word. Let's just pretend that we're sitting here like, ah, I don't know what it means. All right. Maybe you can stop complaining and blank ways to win next year. Everybody, what is the obvious word that you feel like is really just the, the same word that should belong for theorize? Just the prediction theory. Hmm, not quite, not quite, not quite. Come up with? Yes. Yes. Plan, come up with. Think about it. Like, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Maybe you can stop complaining and come up with ways to win next year. One more time, Matthew. Guessing, like try to guess. Is yes. So this strategy is context clues. So with context clues, what you're trying to do is you're trying to read around the word. So when you read around the word, most of the times your brain will be like, hey, that kind of sounds like they're trying to do this. So um, I think like, you just replace that D times where you don't have to do that next year. You don't have to guess no more. You just have to. Uh, so um, I think D. I'm hey, putting right on. D for, yeah. Right on. So make sure you put that D uh, in the chat box when I went ahead and had the timer up there. But yeah. So let's go ahead and try this out now again. So maybe you can stop complaining and theorize ways to win next year. We're thinking come up with ways to win next year. And so when you're thinking about coming up with something, Let's go ahead and look at the answer choices here. Minimize. Does minimize sound like it should belong there? Again, strategy two here, replacement. Maybe you should stop complaining and minimize ways to win next year. Minimize. Uh, I don't think that sounds right. I don't think that sounds right. I don't think so. Prophesize. All right, so maybe you can stop complaining and prophesize ways to win next year. Hmm. Hmm. Yes or no? It was a close possibility. Close. Yeah, there is a very much, much better answer here to make prophesize uh, the incorrect answer. But prophesize is more so like I had a vision, right? So maybe you can stop complaining and have visions of ways to win, like have visions of winning next year. I'm, I'm not really quite sure if that fits in the way that we want it to. So let's leave B there for now, just in case. C, moisturize. Maybe you can stop complaining and moisturize ways to win next year. Okay, look, that doesn't even sound right. I'm not even gonna, yeah, like, no, 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 no. Like my goals don't need lotion. My elbows do, son. So no, bye. D, all right. So hypothesize. Maybe you can stop complaining and hypothesize ways to win next year. Okay. So, hey, no worries, Adam. So with that, I think hypothesize is the strongest one here. And the answer is hypothesize. Because when you think about hypothesis in science, you know, I have a hypothesis. I have a, uh, a theory of how this is going to work. I have a guess as to how mm -hmm. this is going to work. And so maybe yeah. I can stop complaining and theorize. So basically hypothesize or come up with something that you think will work or plan ways to win next year and that's why d is the answer there so theorize and hypothesize are much much more related than prophesize prophesize there's no procedure to it there's no real plan of action for it it's just imagining the result whereas hypothesizing, <laughs> you are laying out start to finish in ways so in definition here speculate or conjecture conjecture basically just means a statement that is true in a way. And so hypothesis, as Arshina put out in the chat box, an educated guess. So plan, hey, go ahead, put something together that you believe will work. That's what a plan is. And so in a sentence, 
it was theorized that we could live on the moon during our lifetime. I'm a part of people. What did you say conjecture, uh, conjecture was again? So a conjecture is pretty much uh, the same thing as saying like a true statement or a, a claim that someone makes. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. So with that said, my party people, let's go ahead and get to this next one here. Three, two, and one. All right, looking at our final two, one, let's go, everybody. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so I will not tolerate disparaging comments about my future business partner. All right, so yes or no, has anybody here ever heard of the word disparaging before or to disparage someone? All right, so if you live in a neighborhood who, that has an HOA, you've probably heard that word. If you've ever watched a you know true crimes blue collar or white collar show, you've probably heard that word before. If you've ever met a Karen, you've probably heard that word before. So I will not tolerate blank comments about my future business partner. So think about it like this, everybody. Again, just read around the word. I will not tolerate blank comments about my future business partner. So if someone is a going to be a future business partner of yours, let's go ahead and think about it real quick. If they're going to be a future business partner, I think it's fair to say that you're going to want to be talking positively about them, right? All right, I think we can agree on that. If someone's going to be your future business partner, you want to speak highly of them. You want good things to be said. But then here we see that, oh, I will not tolerate, I will not tolerate these comments. So is it almost sounding like, hey, I will not tolerate bad comments about my business partner? Right, exactly. I'm not going to tolerate bad things being said about my partner. So let's go ahead and take a look at A, B, C, and D here. Um, and also, Arshina, let me go ahead and make you a co-host so you have free reign of your mic. Boom. So we have these four answers here. Discouraging diabolical, defamatory, and dubious. So when we think of look at A through D, discouraging means to kind of excourage them, to kind of like encourage them in a different direction, to not really have them want to do something, right? To make them feel bad about doing something. Diabolical kind of means, well, evil. I think we all know that, or maybe we've heard of the word diabolical before, like mwahaha, evil. Defamatory. Defamatory, I think that is... Well, it is the answer. And when you think about defamatory, you're thinking about attacking someone's character or someone's name. And so I will not tolerate defamatory comments about my future business partner. That would fit. Dubious. Arshina, hit me with it. What does dubious mean? It means hesitating or doubting. Boom. So I will not tolerate hesitating comments. Hmm. No, that wouldn't really fit either. So the answer here is going to be C, definition of disparaging being derogatory, belittling, also defamatory. And there it is. Now, remember, everybody, this is only question three. But remember, in every question, we have the word that we're being asked about. And then we have four other answer choices. So with those four other answer choices, plus the one that we're doing, that makes five words every single question that you can learn. So since we've already gone over three words or three questions, that's actually a total of 15 words. So remember, everybody, don't just write down the word in the question. Write down any word that you may not recognize. That's going to put you in a better position. That's going to put you in a better position. So derogatory or disparaging again, derogatory or belittling. Uh, and in a sentence here, I'm thankful Georgina held back all the disparaging thoughts she had about thrifted clothes. 
And there it is. All right, cool. So with this next one coming up, uh, we're going to give ourselves 35 seconds one more time. Um, Adam, the answer to the first question was uh, A. So with that said, coming up on the next question, three, two, one, let's go. Looking at our final five, four, three, two, and one. Answers, 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 answers. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So for the sake of making this much more interesting than it is, let's go ahead and turn it over to Arshina while I look for Jeopardy theme music. Go ahead, Arshina, take over. Thanks. All right, guys, let's read it. The doctor could hear the infant's heart palpitate with no problems. So palpitate, does that sound like anything to someone? Does that sound familiar at all? Palpitate, you can just type it in. If not, I'll just keep moving forward. Pulse, it's pretty close. So let's go ahead and read it again without the word in there and see if maybe we can replace some of those uh, multiple choice answers. The doctor could hear the infant's heart blank with no problems. What does a heart need to do, guys? What does a heart need to do? Beat, pump. So we're kind of maybe looking for some word like that, right? So let's see if we know any of these choices. A is hover. What does hover mean? Anyone hover? Yep, so float over, exactly. Hover, like a hoverboard, hover in space. Anderson's drawing an alien ship, float. <laughs> All right, we've got so do we think uh, that's, yeah, it's not hover. We don't need a heart to hover. B, stifle. Anyone know what stifle means? Stifle. Stifle. No, suffocate. Good job, Chrissy. That's exactly right. It's suffocate. So do we need an infant's heart to suffocate? Guys, who wrote this question? All right. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, C, drape. What does drape mean? Anyone know? To cover? Cover? Yep. Like curtains. Curtains drape the curtains, right? Drapes cover, exactly. So that leaves our last answer because drape probably isn't going to work. Uh, pulse. That kind of is um, definitely the answer because it's the closest thing to beat, like you guys all said. So I think this yeah the answer is pulse the doctor could hear the infant's heart pulse with no problems palpitate pulse there you go guys and that is our answer d pulse and i think that that one's a pretty uh pretty relatable one because when the moment you hear the word heart you think of heartbeat and when you think of heartbeat you think of pulse and i think that uh for the majority of us we would be able to see that uh cultural or not cultural but that connection there nice and easy so the definition of palpitate, go ahead, take over Arshina with the sentence and we're moving on. Definition of palpitate, beat rapidly, pound or throb. I have never seen someone palpitate with the with fear at the sight of balloons. What? Me neither, actually. All right, so there it is. So we're going to move on to the next one here. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Yeah, that's, that's actually a lot of us that match, right? You can hear my heart palpitate when I'm taking that test. <laughs> Why did I draw an egg? What the hell? Oh, yeah, sunny side up. <laughs> nah, I drew an alien spaceship that was floating, boss. <laughs> I was like, egg, bro, what? What? Oh, man, I need to go take a Bob Ross class. All right, here we go. So coming on up here, question number five, three. <laughs> Two, that got me, man. That was good. One, let's go.
count of five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Answers, answers, answers. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The sentence reads, give your task card to the assessor by the end or at the end of your tour, and they will tell you if you pass. So one more time, give your task card to the assessor at the end of your tour, and they will tell you if you pass. Assessor most nearly means what? So hmm, an assessor is probably someone who is overseeing an assessment. I think that we can Agree, but that by viewing the word, a root word comes out, assess. So you can think of assessor, assessment, assessing, right? And so those are all part of the same root word, assess. So when we think about this, anchor, aperture, auditor, amateur. Okay, everybody, uh, what does an anchor do? What does an anchor do? Hold something down, right? Hold something in place. I like that the three of all, that was awesome. Yeah, hold something down, hold weight, right? Keeping it locked in place. Okay, give your task card to the anchor at the end of your tour and they will tell you if you pass. Look, this isn't SpongeBob. There is no magic conch shell that you can be like, hey, tell me, guide me. That's not what this is. So nope, that's not gonna work out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at B here, aperture. Who here knows what aperture means? Mario says to direct. Anybody else got an idea there? Space? No, don't know. Arshina want to take over there? What does aperture mean? Your mic's off. Oh, hello. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew her, guys. Aperture. Um... I forget what that means. Let me look it up because I don't know, remember all the words, believe it or not. An opening, a hole, or a gap. Opening a hole or a gap. So give your task card to the opening hole or gap at the end of your tour, and they will tell you if you pass. Um, mm, I don't think so. In case you haven't heard, I have an ASVAB program that's meant to help you raise your score wherever you're at. And here are three great reasons to go ahead and consider it right now. One, you get all of my classes. Two, you can text me whenever you need help. And three, you can't beat the price. I can promise you right now, if you click the link in the description of this video or somewhere around here, and you go ahead, watch how it works and look at the price, I'm pretty sure your jaw is gonna drop. It's actually 24 hours of classes a month plus everything else that you get with it for less than 60 bucks. So with that said, go ahead and check it out. I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach and I'm proud to help you ace the ASVAB. Let's get to it so we can get that job we deserve. Check it out now. But until then, if you say no, it's all good. Let's get back to the learning here and let's keep crushing it. Auditor, give your task card to the auditor at the end of your tour and they will tell you if you pass. When we think about the word auditor or a person who is an auditor, what does an auditor typically do? To check or inspect, right? To check something, to audit something, right? Yeah, to assess, they inspect, they review, they make corrections, they oversee. Yes. Yes, that's the answer right there. And then amateur, give your task card to the amateur at the end of your tour and they will tell you if you pass. Uh, what? I don't think I should be interacting with any amateurs if they're leading me. So no, right, no. The answer here is going to be C. And so the definition of assessor is a person who evaluates quality. Now, in a sentence here, the assessor will measure if we qualify to compete in the next set of games. So everybody, uh, who does assessor sound like in your ASVAB journey? Let's go. Who does the assessor sound like in your ASVAB journey? So go ahead and give yourselves about 10 seconds here. Let's see what you got. All right, that was 15 seconds. All right, so an assessor, someone who's overseeing, um, especially when it comes to taking the ASVAB. Wow, y'all put 
Oh, Bria, you're not under? Nice. Uh, but me and Arshina. Me and Arshina, me and Arshina. Ronald, there we go. The person who's checking the ASVAD test. So I appreciate the compliments there in terms of viewing me as an assessor. I'm actually not an assessor. I am more of an instructor. Your assessor is actually your staff sergeant who's going to be overseeing you when you're taking your practice test and the staff sergeant that's there at MEPS to actually oversee your ASVAB test itself. That right there, that's going to be your assessor. So, so Mr. Poof. <laughs> All right. So with that, there it is. Um, we're going to be going into question number six right now. Let's go ahead and get on with it. Three, two, one, let's go. Looking at our final four, three, two, let's go. Everybody, 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 come on. I wanna see all 66 people here. Go ahead and give their answers. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. His plan had too much redundancy to be efficient. Redundancy most nearly means what? Apprehension, diffuseness, incentive, or bias. All right, so his plan had too much blank to be efficient. So we can try to think about that as, okay, can we replace the word and can we automatically tell what's supposed to be in there? Again, effective strategy, but sometimes it may not always work. Check this, uh, check this example out. His plan had too much blank to be efficient. Now, you might need to have some background knowledge here to really get this down in the first try. And so that may not work um, initially. So, because you get to have like knowledge on like how generally, you know, how plans work and things like that. And you may not see instantly how the word might fit in. Now, the second thing about this question is that you may be looking at the word apprehension or diffuseness or incentive thinking, maybe I don't know those words by heart. Bias, yeah, I think we can all say that we know. But what about apprehension, diffuseness or incentive? Again, this is a more difficult question that we might believe. So, his plan had too much apprehension to be efficient. Everybody, what does apprehension mean to you? Hmm. What does apprehension mean to you? Type that out. So to take into control, complex. Hmm. So to take into control, so to apprehend, yeah, that would be that would be one way to think about it, as I was uh, discussing with uh, Arshina earlier. Yeah, to take into control, to really, um, and to grab, uh, to capture. Uh, then the other way in terms of, oh, I'm a little apprehensive about taking tests. You know, I'm a little nervous about taking tests. I'm a little reluctant to take tests. And so, mm, not quite there either. His plan had too much, mm, not, not quite there. B, diffuseness. What does diffuseness mean? Anyone know what diffuseness means? Complexity. Mixed up. Don't know. No. Let's go and help ourselves out here. I got y'all. The answer is diffuseness. So the definition of redundancy. Has anybody ever heard of the word redundant? Has anyone ever heard of the word redundant? Right, yeah, I think a lot of us have heard it. Maybe we don't know the definition, but a lot of us may have heard it before. So think about it like this. Oh, hi, Susie. Oh, uh, hi, Adam. All right, cool. So Susie says, I really like the sky because it's blue and it's also really high up and it's uh, teal colored and blue colored and um, a really light blue color too. Notice how I'm like repeating the word blue like a bunch of times. That's what redundant means. Unnecessarily repetitive is 
pretty much how one would, you know, kind of uh, summarize that in one way in terms of sentences and things like that. But uh, the, the true definition of redundancy is the state of no longer being needed or useful. So if I say that, you know, hey, I really love, uh, you know, I, I really love the color blue. Um, did I tell you I like the color blue? So saying that, did I tell you I like the color blue? That right there is redundant. It's not needed to be said because I already said that before. So in the sentence here, I don't like the redundancy in this character's lines. So maybe you can revise them. Boom. And so from there, incentive. Everybody, what does incentive mean? What does incentive mean? I think a lot of y'all have heard the word incentive when that army recruiter was sitting outside of the recruiting station saying, hey, sign up for these incentives. Yeah, bonuses, extras. Yeah, we can quantify it that way. Um, an incentive is basically like a benefit used to attract action. So basically a benefit that you can kind of give out to attract someone to take action. Exactly. A motivator to do something. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Great way to put it, Mario. You do the same. How? I don't give y'all any bonuses. I mean, I don't grade y'all at all. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. All right, three, two, one, let's go. All right, all right, all right, let's see what's up here. All right, let me go ahead and put this right there. Someone just needed the link. Let's go ahead and get to it here. So can we get someone more inconspicuous for this heist? All right, everybody, really quick, uh, what's a heist again? What's a heist? What is a heist? A robbery, robbery, a raid. Nice, okay, cool, 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 cool. So can we get someone more blank for this heist? All right, so when we look at the word inconspicuous, there's a prefix in there, in, and there's a root word conspicuous. Has anyone here ever heard of the word conspicuous? Right. I think we can agree that we've heard of the word conspicuous. Um, here's an example. When NASA launches their spaceships at night, the rocket ship is very conspicuous in the night sky. Right? It's very obvious in the right sky, right? In the night sky. It's very noticeable in the night sky, right? You can't miss it. Exactly. So when you use in in front of a word, everybody, what does the prefix in do to the word in front of it? Mario, that's correct. All right on. The opposite. Exactly, Felicia. Not the opposite. Yep. The, the prefix in. So let me break this down for you. Here's another way that we can break words down, but you have to know the root words for this. Here's a way. We can say, hey, look, conspicuous means obvious. So then when we use the prefix in for inconspicuous, let me actually use green because obviously purple and green. So when we use the prefix in, that means not. So when we break this down in this way, everybody, inconspicuous means not obvious. Can we find someone a little more not obvious for this robbery? So think about it. If I'm trying to rob somebody, which I'm not saying I ever have, nor am I saying I ever haven't. But if I wanted to rob somebody, I would probably want to go in their house, not be noticed, try not to kill anybody and make it out with nobody noticing, right? Cool. Sounds good. So can we get someone a little more not obvious for this heist? Okay, let's check it out. Non-uniform. Let me go ahead and just zoom out a little bit. Non-uniform. That doesn't mean not obvious. 
unremarkable. Unremarkable meaning, so remarkable means noteworthy. So not noteworthy. So not worth noting or not worth paying attention to. Does B sound like that would work? All right, so if we go by democracy here, it looks like B would work, B would. So when you think about it, so Adam, I got you, boss. So inconspicuous, meaning not obvious. If it's not obvious, it's not very easy to notice, right? I think we can agree on that. If it's not obvious, you kind of have to look for it to see it. Unremarkable. Remarkable meaning noteworthy. Unremarkable, not noteworthy. Not worth taking note of. If I'm walking around, you know, that same chair that you have just sitting there every single day might be unrem unremarkable because it's sometimes going to just blend into the background. And so it might not be noticeable. Unremarkable is the answer here. It is the answer. Boom. And so the definition of inconspicuous, not clearly visible, not unnoticeable. So the man's simple look made him inconspicuous. And can we double check this really quick, actually, Arshina? Not unnoticeable. So that means noticeable. I think we might mean to say. I definitely made a, temp, temp, a typo there. Right. So we might just mean like not noticeable. Not noticeable. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a better way to put it. Yeah, right that's there. exactly it. No worries. And then looking at C, insensible. Insensible. Arshina, want to tell me what insensible means? So if we, again, if we did the same thing, we took in off of insensible, what does sensible mean? Means you use your senses. So insensible, meaning it's not something that you could put together, like put two and two together for. It's not really obvious. Right, like it won't make sense, right? Like yeah. sensible meaning, hey, this makes sense. Yeah. Insensible meaning not making sense. Yeah. And then lastly with D, unscrupulous. So the definition of unscrupulous means having or showing no moral principles. So basically being a low life. That's when that's what unscrupulous means. All right. So with that said, definition again, not clearly visible. And then the man's simple look made him inconspicuous. Number eight, let's get it. I don't care if you've got zero right out of eight or seven so far or all seven correct. We have words that we can continue learning. And that's the goal here. Let's go. Number eight, time starting. Three, two, one, and time. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, this one might have been too easy, huh? Come on, go on, go on. Go ahead and put your answers in. Put your answers in. Put your answers in. Let's go. All right. So let's go ahead and read it out here. Maybe we're all right. Maybe we're all wrong. I love it when we play these games. So my friends tried to assuage me. Or excuse me, assuage me. My friends tried to assuage the embarrassment of my show, but I knew terrible reviews were coming. Okay. My friends tried to blank the embarrassment of my show, but I knew terrible reviews were coming. Okay. Hmm. I knew terrible reviews were coming, even though my friends tried to do something with the embarrassment. So when you think about that, what does it sound like the friends are trying to do? Like friends, like good people, right? People that you know will do good for you. So my friends tried to do something about the embarrassment of the show, but I still knew that the terrible news was coming, right? They're trying to, to they divert the pain, right? To kind of distract from the embarrassment or to just do away with the embarrassment, right? But basically anything that has to do with just stopping the embarrassment in some way, shape or form. And so... When we think about it, looking at the answer choices, I'm going to grab my pencil here, looking at the answer choices, I'm sitting here looking at them like, okay, we got alleviate, we got prepend, we got exert, and we got interpret. Now I'm going to stay the hell away from B for a second because I have no idea what that means. So let's go ahead and take a look at A, alleviate. Anybody ever taken an alleviate pill before?
so far, 66% of the population. Anybody else? So yeah, so alleve, alleviate essentially means what, everybody? To help with, right? To suppress something, to help with uh, bad things. Yes, that is what alleviate means. And that's why A is going to be the answer. Now we're going to have prepend, exert, and interpret. So let's go to the definition, a sentence, and then Arshina is going to tell us what pretend means, because I was actually supposed to be pretend. There we go. So there's that. Now, the definition of assuage means to relieve or ease and alleviate in the same sense, in the same category. Now, over here, in abusive relationships, the abuser will always seem to assuage the relationship with apologies and grand gestures. So how do I pronounce the word for question eight? Assuage. 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 So alleviate, pretend. Pretend is to try to be something that you're not. Um, exert, you are essentially putting forth effort for something. So I'm going to exert my will upon you. So I'm going to go ahead and impose myself upon you. To, so to exert is to impose. And then interpret is to kind of take in and define and to try to comprehend or make sense of. And so there we have it. So before we get into question nine, is anybody here having second doubts about word knowledge or are you feeling pretty good so far that we can learn and understand some strategies that we can use? How are we feeling so far? Pretty good. Feeling great. Seven out of eight, my guy. Right on, right on. Only when they give you one word. That's when you're most confident, Anthony. Understanding better, Chrissy, right on. Jacqueline, I like it. Never been good at word knowledge. Hey, you got to stop you right there, David. So remember, it is never about being good or bad at something. You know what I always say. It's about how much experience you have with that thing. Again, you know, we can sit here all day and say, I'm bad at something. Compared to who? You know, it's a great day. Compared to what kind of a day? You know, like... Everything's relative. So the way that you might as well say it is, hey, I'm just not quite experienced at this. And to get better, I will put more time in. That's simple. I, I just, I got to say something about that because when you use the word, I'm bad at this, you're kind of like etching like a fact into reality and you don't really want to do that. So with that said, um, feeling awesome there, Sai, right on. Feeling all right, Karen. Feeling okay, Janasia, right on. Arshina, bonus word, prepend. Prepend means to add something to the top or the beginning. Think of append, like appendage, or append something to the end of your essay because you forgot to mention something, whatever it may be. Right on. Is word knowledge stressful? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. And I see you guys putting in your numbers there. I was AFK for like 25. Pressure builds diamonds. Stick with it. Let's go. I'm better at this than math. <laughs> Put positive out there. Math is my weakness. All right, there you go. Number nine, three, two, one. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one, answers. Go, 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 come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Fill them in, fill them in. All right, Arshina, go ahead, take over. All right, guys, the allegations were tantamount to treason. If that was just a bunch of words you don't know, I hope you guessed. All right, so tantamount, we're looking at tantamount. Let's go ahead and read it again without tantamount. The allegations were blank to treasons. Does anyone know what allegations are? Go ahead and type it in. Accusations, allegations, very close. To treason. And now, so what's treason? Treason. Anyone else? To betray like a crime. Yeah, so it's definitely something bad. Someone's getting accused for something bad. So we need to fit in a word there. 
the allegations were blank to treason. All right, so what kind of word do you think would fit in there? Does anyone have any guesses? All right, <laughs> you guess D. All right, well, let's just go through the top of each word. Bounded, what does bounded mean? Anyone? Bounded, if you were bounded to something, like tied to bounded, like a dog is bounded to a tree. You're attached to a tree. Tied up, yep, there you go. Exactly. All right, now well, let's go to the next word, fathomless. Does anyone, can anyone find like the root word there? Anderson's really giving you a hint here. Fathom, unfathomable. Yeah, like you're not able to understand. Good job, Sai. Uh, can't think of it. So, and then I'm not really sure how that would go into treason, but let's try another word, signal. What would signal mean? Another word for signal. A sign, yeah, definitely. Signal, a sign, alert, there you go. Great job, guys. We're signed to treason, mm, maybe, I don't know. Let's see if there's a better word here. We have indistinguishable. So this seems like a word maybe we should break down in case anyone doesn't know. Again, it starts with in, and then we have distinguish, and then we have a bull. So in meaning not, distinguish, anyone know what that means? Distinguish. Put oh, I'm not sure where, you, oh, you guys are probably thinking of like a fire, a fire extinguisher, <laughs> but that's not really it. Distinguish, yeah. So yeah, it, unique or maybe uh, something you'll really pay attention to. Yeah, they're, they're thinking uh, to extinguish. Yeah. Okay, extinguish, close. Yeah, so very distinct or there you go, different. So we're, so it's just different. And then a bull meaning able. So it's not different. All right, so let's go ahead and put these words back into the sentence. The allegations were bounded, tied up to treason. Mm, kind of strong, maybe. The allegations were not understandable to treason maybe unfathomable to treason that's definitely probably no i'm gonna go ahead and say that's a no because it just doesn't make sense there right is a sign to treason i'm gonna go ahead and mark that no as well because right here the answer is d <laughs> there you go so the definition of tantamount is equivalent to as good as basically the same it is equal to so tantamount allegations or tantamount to treason. So the allegations would equal you to treason. Right there, you are get, you're get you getting into an IB program is tantamount to my Harvard acceptance. So this is a great week for our parents, tantamount equal to. All right, you're on fire right now, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. And so far, again, remember, guys, make sure to grab every word that you can. Make sure to grab every word you can to make it work. So we got one more to go, number 10. So this is going to make a total of 50 words that we have gone through in just one hour. So, again, with 15 minutes, I can fully expect you to get through, at the very least, you know, 12 to 15 new words with 15 minutes. Um, and, again, that's, that includes going through that cycle in the, work, uh, the Vocabulary Builder app or with the Word Knowledge Bootcamp. And going back to really understand the definitions of those words, you can go back as many times as you need to. So three, two, one, let's finish strong here. Let's go.
four, three, two, one, and time. Let's go. Put those answers in, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We got paragraph comprehension right after this one. We got paragraph comprehension right after this one. So the argument erupted into a blank. I'm not even going to read that word. Everybody, if you have a regular argument that erupts into something, what does it sound like it erupted into? Think about your local McDonald's at 3 a.m. What do you think happens when an argument erupts? What does it erupt into? An altercation, to put it nicely, right? Yeah. In other words, world star. So an argument erupted into a blank, a fight, an altercation, right? And so when we look at the answer choices, this is a quick one. Scramble, bustle, struggle, muscle. Okay. Looks like we like those LEs. All right. So the argument erupted into a struggle. That's the answer right there. The argument erupted into a struggle. Struggle for what? Struggle for power. Struggle to stay conscious because your fists are going into each other's face. Who knows? So there it is. Struggle is the word to use. And the definition of scuffle is to fight or tussle. Now, in a sentence, right over here. They got into a scuffle before she drove his truck into the lake. Probably deserved it. All right. So with that said, how do we do my party, people? How many out of 10 were we able to get? And wherever you were at, which word stood out to you the most? Which word stood out to you the most? Let's find out because we had scuffle at first or at last, ten amount, assuage, inconspicuous, redundancy, assessor, palpitate, disparaging, theorize, and console. So which word stood out to you the most? We're going to let AD in here. There we go. So again, console, theorize, disparaging, palpitate, assessor, redundancy, inconspicuous, assuage, tantamount, and scuffle. Right on, right on, right on. So make sure that if I randomly ask you that word, what that word means in a random text, if you're texting me, hey, be ready to answer it. Be ready to get that word down. Hey, hey, I hope you enjoyed the first half of this recording. And if you want to watch the full recording, the full version of this and every single class I've ever done, then go ahead and consider joining my ASVAB All Access program. It gives you access to 24 hours of classes per month and every single recording I've ever done. And on top of that, you get to text me whenever you need help and get thousands of extra practice problems to work on whenever you want, 24 seven with video solutions to the math questions. That way you can keep growing, get the score you want, and that job you deserve. I'm Coach Anderson. I have a master's degree in teaching, been doing this for over 10 years, and it's my passion to help people succeed just like you. So let's go ahead and lower the test anxiety. Let's go ahead and get rid of the blanking out feeling, all of that, and really replace it with true confidence that we can take into test day and get the results that we want. So again, get the ASVAB All Access program or shoot me a text if you have any questions about it, but there is a video on the page with the link. So watch that video, see how it works, or again, shoot me a text right over there. There's my number. That way you can learn more about it and truly understand that this is about helping you succeed and our community here to help you enlist. So again, sign up now, get started, and get the score you want. Let's get to it.